Welcome to the GP Alarma YouTube channel. Now, in conjunction with the release of the new SRAM Red E1 group set in May 2024, SRAM also released new firmwares for their other access group sets, allowing you to configure buttons or switches to have Ant Plus Shift function set functionality. What that means is with the new hidden buttons you have on the new red levers with multi-clicks or with these wireless blips, you can now control your bike computer. Excellent. That worked first time. Those familiar with Shimano DFly, it's pretty much DFly functionality for SRAM Axis owners. Now at this point in time, documentation is a little light on and vendors are only just starting to add compatibility to their units. There's a few questions that have popped up online. I've been diving deep into all the details and for something I thought would be a pretty straightforward how-to video has become anything but. There's a bit of a rabbit hole here with configuration options that you'll need to know. But having said that, once this is all up and running, it makes the experience out on the bike a little better. If you're riding along with a big set of gloves on, you won't need to start messing around with a screen. You can keep your eyes up the road or on your bike computer, and most importantly, your hands on the bars. Now, what you can do with this is change pages or screens, as you've seen here with my demonstration. You can mark laps. Maybe you want to jump straight to the map screen so I can shortcut straight to the map. And there's a few other things you can do as well. I'll go through everything in a minute, and that's without even touching your bike computer. Now onto what you'll need for this, obviously SRAM Axis works with Rival, Force, and Red at the moment, or with updated firmware, obviously, to the latest version. And you'll need some compatible buttons, or shifters, or clicks, or blips. Those being multi-clicks, wired, that's what I've tested, uh, the wireless blips, and the new SRAM Red E1 hidden buttons. And of course, anything SRAM want to release in the future with compatibility. On the Garmin Edge side of things, you'll need a 540, 840, or 1040. They're the compatible units at the moment and obviously anything Garmin release in the future. Side note, and there will be a few side notes in this video because there's a lot of extra little detail. Other compatible bike computers at the moment are the Karoo 3 and all element units according to Wahoo's change logs. So unfortunately those with an 830, a 530, maybe a 1030 or 1030 plus, no compatibility for these Ant Plus shift functions at this point in time. And the final thing you'll need is the SRAM Axis app, which I'll pull up on the screen here to go through the configuration of this, well, I call bare bones groups, so I've called it here Rival Axis Bones. It's only a rear derailleur, which is the master unit, and two wireless blips to keep things simple for this demonstration. Okay, so for the configuration of this, we load the SRAM Axis app, we connect to the master unit there, Rival RD. The components are just two blips. Configure controls is what we're after. And for the configuration you've seen demonstrated on screen, the wireless blips are configured for function set functionality. We just tap on those. Now, if you don't know which blip is which or which switch is which on SRAM, if you actually press them, they'll light up and dual press will light up the bottom one. So to quickly take you through the configuration of the bare bones, we have blip number one configured with Ant Plus control. So at the top there, you see shift up, shift down, there's only one derailleur obviously, or unassigned, or we click down on Ant Plus Control, and here's where the fun begins. Function set number one, short press. Now short press is an important attribute of what we're seeing here, so these only support short press. Button number two, I'll go back on that, is configured exactly the same, but for function set two. Now the dual press, which is effectively a third button, is configured for function set three. Again, short press, that's the only thing they support. So that's it in a nutshell for my bare bones setup here. So rear derailleur, which is the master, I have two blip buttons configured for Ant Plus shift function set functionality. Obviously everyone else's group set, including mine, out in the garage, have a lot more components than this, but that's it at a very basic level. Okay, onto some very important information I would have loved to have seen documented elsewhere and some clarification of some very confusing setup options that I've seen. Wireless blips only have a short press, that's it. There is no long press with wireless blips. They have a short press each and a short press dual. So two buttons, three functions. When it comes to wired in multi-clicks, which are being phased out because the new levers don't have auxiliary ports, still need to talk about those though, they have a short press each, so click, click. They have a long press each, and they have a dual press short press, and a dual press long press. So two wired buttons, six functions. And it's the same with the hidden or bonus buttons on the new axis levers. They each have a short press each side, long press each side, and the dual configuration has a short press dual and a long press dual. Another important note is that the lever buttons, the ones down here on the levers, which we change up and down and front derailleur, cannot be assigned this Ant Plus Shift Function Set functionality. They're for gear shifts only in the current Axis configuration. 
Okay, looking at a bike with a little bit more standard setup than my Bones configuration, we have a bike here with the SRAM Red Axis E1 levers with the bonus buttons and some wireless blips on the underside of the handlebars. The configuration, I have left bonus set to function one, right bonus set to function two, and the dual press of the bonus buttons set to function three. Let's configure the wireless buttons as function set number four for the first button and blip number two as function set number five and the dual press of the blip pair. We'll set that to function number six. Alrighty, job done on that. And as per my takeout notes, the paddle buttons or the shifter buttons on the levers have no option for the Ant Plus control. They are gear shifters only, and that's the way it is for now. Now I'll go over the Garmin configuration in just a few moments, but I wanted to demonstrate that such a simple looking setup like this allows for up to nine functions from the handlebars. Those being short press left, long press left, short press right, long press right, dual short press, dual long press on those two, and short press left, short press right, and dual press on the blips. Whew, all right, nine functions from the handlebars. So good luck trying to remember what all nine functions do when you're out on the road at threshold, trying to find out where the hell you assigned a lap button. Keeping it simple is definitely the way to go. Okay, so my takeout notes to here. Each button can be configured as either gear control or computer control. You can't do both. Those paddle buttons, which are by default gear changes, cannot be assigned to this Ant Plus Shift functionality. And the third button is a virtual separate button entirely, which can be configured in either gear or computer control. So for example, on the screen here again, pulling up my uh, little setup I've got here on the table, we go next, next, and back, and back. Now the dual press could be assigned to shift gears if I want. Doesn't make a lot of sense with the rear derailleur, but if you've got a front derailleur, you can still assign that double press to a gear shift. So dual press is a virtual third button. Okay, and also I've got noted down here again, I've covered it, but I will cover it again. These wireless blips do not have any long press functionality. I'm hammering on this because the SRAM Access app confirms this. However, the Karoo 3 and the Garmin Edge units believe they do. They don't, it doesn't work. But we are in early days of uh, the implementation of this, so they may need to update their firmware on that. Okay, now over to the Edge configuration. This is the easy part. And all you need to do for that is pair your edge unit to your master unit. SRAM Axis Rear Derailleur is the master for that. So we'll go to sensors here. This is already paired. Rival Axis as a sensor. Sensor details. And Ant Plus Function Setup. That's with the latest firmware on the X40 series. And you can see because I've configured three function buttons, if I've configured more, it will have more listed there on screen. This is where we assign the tasks that the functions will do on the head unit. So function one, this little guy over here, will do previous page, exactly what we've seen. Press and hold doesn't exist with this, so it's unassigned and I'll leave it unassigned. Function number two, button number two, next page, we've seen that working, and press and hold, again, doesn't exist, doesn't work, it's unassigned. You can still assign it, but it doesn't work. And Ant Plus function three, which is the virtual button, dual press, goes to show map, which is exactly what I was showing on screen before. And that's it for my bones configuration here. But let's go up to function one and show you all the options we have. So we have next page, previous page, record lap, start and stop timer, start timer, stop timer, turn back light on, show map, show elevation profile, show lap summary, show compass, lights on or off, lights, change mode and screenshot. Now given with every firmware update, there's a ton more features packed into these units. I expect that list to grow and grow, but they're the defaults for right now. Okay. Cool, let's get back to, okay, we're back on that. Okay, so today's summary, SRAM Axis Bike Computer Control is here. And it's not just for the new SRAM Red E1 group sets. You'll need to update the firmware on your Axis system. You'll need to configure the buttons within the SRAM Axis app, the compatible bike computers. At this point in time, Garmin Edge X40 series, the Karoo 3 and all element computers. And remembering not all buttons or SRAM switches or multi-clicks offer the same functionality. If you're looking at configuring this, I'd start simple, as I've shown here, so page next, page previous, and maybe lap start, or lights on, lights off, something like that, and then go from there. All right, so that's the SRAM stuff with the Edge 
all covered off. As a bonus round, let's have a quick look at how Wahoo do this. It's probably worth a whole video in itself, but I can tell you that the element implementation is a whole lot easier. Pulling up their uh, web page on this with the wireless blips, such simple functionality. Function number one, left button on screen. Function number two, right button. And that virtual button, the dual press, is the middle button. It's as simple as that with Wahoo units and those wireless splits. Now with the wired in multi-clicks or those bonus hood buttons, which do have a longer press, you can get to the side buttons as well. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like a similar video to this on the Wahoo side of things, but it is pretty easy. Follow their instructions. All right, with that, we are done. Hopefully things are a lot more clearer now with such a simple addition to these uh, by computer controls from SRAM Access that was anything but when I dug into the details. All right, as always, if you found this informative, give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe to be across new videos on this channel, and with that, I'm out of here.